Um, our third speaker is Daryl Jackson, who's instructed me to give him a very brief introduction. So I'll just say he's Deloitte's federal, the head of director of Deloitte's federal government practice, and he's been doing that job since 2006. He's worked in many areas of the postal system uh, on process improvement, regulation, sales, sustainability, bulk mail, unit optimization, and digital platforms. So welcome, Daryl. Thank you. It's very difficult after this morning's distinguished panel um, and then after my fellow panel members to get up and say something unique about the topic of universal service. Uh, but hopefully, uh, in several areas, you will find that we have the same approach and the same observations. Uh, but ultimately, for universal service for the national postal operators, there must be change in how universal service obligation is defined. And that that can be done without creating inequity for the consuming public that we serve uh, in our respective country markets. So universal service uh, is something that in many ways was, let's see, there we go. Um, it's, it's, it's been around for a long time. But one of the key takeaways here is that in the basic tenets of USO, access, delivery, frequency, those major pillars of the USO, were written a decade before the explosion of the internet and World Wide Web. A decade before. So, and to give you another example, I'll talk about the U U.S. Postal Service. They are still required to deliver at the same standards and frequency as they were delivering in 1983. Universal service obligation must be brought into today's age. And we can do that, but and we can do it in a responsible manner, but it needs to be done and it can't wait for any more studies. Um, one of the things I've observed uh, in the US, there was postal service in the US was starting to deal with plant optimization. They were needing because they didn't have any other levers to pull except to try to pull down plant operations, centralize it, make it more efficient, and Congress, member of Congress said, wait a minute, and this is in the spring a few months ago, we need more time to study this. They've been studying it since 2006 when they passed the last Postal Act. The only thing they've done in legislation in the U.S. is to tell them what they can't do, not what they're allowed to do. So it is time for a change. You've heard it before, parcel volumes are increasing, mail volumes are going down. I know that parcels are not part of the USO, but they are part of the organizations that we serve or members of, the national postal operators. And that impacts the economic sustainability of those posts. And so because of that, we must have a new model. Uh, again, I'm going to quote some U.S. numbers, but you can see these in different points. Um, in 2006, U.S. Postal Service had 152 million delivery points. They've got six-day-a-week delivery as part of their USO obligation. 152 million six days a week. In, in 2006, they had 213 billion pieces of mail that came through the system. That made it sustainable. That made it a balanced item to deliver universal service and remain economically viable. In 2014, they have 154 million delivery points and they have 155 billion pieces of mail. So the, the, the address volumes are going 
down and their delivery points are going up. And as we look at the new market development, a new market model, then these things must be brought into it. The economic value, and this is what most people don't want to talk about, and it was, I think, teased with in the early morning panel, the economic value of the male monopoly has gone way down from where it was 10, 15 years ago. There was a reason that we were given monopolies over the mailbox, and that was because we would deliver under a universal standard. The value of that monopoly is not what it was, and it will not return to that. So we must come up with a new model. So this is just a, a graph depicting this kind of decline. Now that's total mail volume in the US, but in terms of first class addressed mail volume, so this includes uh, uh, ad mail, uh, direct mail, things like that, all the different pieces put together, and you see the precipitous decline. Since 2008 to 2013, they've had a 61% decline in mail volume, in first class mail volume, 61%. The model of universal service is not sustainable under that. But how do we deal with it? Uh, this is where it gets repetitious with what some of the other speakers have talked about. Um, so the guiding principles that would go with this, uh, and I'll, I'm going to flip over to another chart. It does it a little bit differently. Modernize the USO policy. I think we've already discussed enough saying it is out of date. Um, it is so far out of date of understanding the reality of delivery points. And it is, and the dire state of that has only been forestalled by the great advantage, the great opportunity of e-commerce and parcels. But for that, we would be talking about a different picture in terms of pure mail delivery. Uh, it should be flexible. What I mean by that is that it should be flexible in the types of products that can be offered. It should be flexible in terms of how products are priced, and that really comes under the financial sustainability. But it could have different trigger points in delivery. There can be volume levels that are built into a universal service that said if mail delivery goes to this level, then your delivery schedule goes to this. That could be preset and defined where it's not a decade to debate the issue while you're already having the problems with it. It, USO should be financially sustainable. Um, it cannot be an unfunded mandate put on the backs of national postal operators, which is what it is now. For instance, for large geography countries, uh, USO means a single price. A single price in a letter whether you're sending it 50 miles or you're sending it 3,000, the same rate. That is antiquated. So in the days where we have greater access, uh, we need to begin to look at that. And some would say that's gonna to create too much complexity. But a simple four tranche system dividing a large country into four areas and then having you know a zone inside zone one you get the same price as you do now in whatever your country's first class mail is if it goes from zone one to zone two it's a little bit higher if it goes from zone one to zone three it's more so you can create a system that has flexibility in that that creates financial stability so that postal operators can run their businesses and deliver universal service. Um, 
Because if we don't do that, then there are other mandates that are not nearly as attractive. So the USO in the future. Uh, we've had some say, let the market define it. Um, and I, I ultimately think that's true. And I'll, I'll give an except for here. There's large integrators that ship in various countries. Uh, but what they will try to do is when they ship to rural areas, they will more often than not hand it off to the post because they do not want to have the loss of delivering that parcel in a faraway place. So they're going to give it to the post. Um, so I still think there is a need for standards based uh, in that because the post may want to shrink back in what it covers in its geographic reach. Uh, so I think we still need standards. Uh, USO pricing should match the cost. And so right now, we've had for years where it's been the regulators trying to say that letter volume and letter profits are subsidizing market entry into parcels in other areas. And I think that pendulum, that tipping point, has come up. And it looks like it will continue to happen. So we need to find a new universal service obligation model. So in summary, most of the USO, USO laws and regulations do create unfunded mandates for postal operators. They protect, but what they should be doing is protecting the consumer while creating a sustainable USO. USO needs standards and policies to be relevant, relevant in today's postal operators' economic ecosystem. Thank you. Thanks very much, Daryl. I'm sensing some quite interesting divergences of, of perspective from looking at different posts in different business environments. Um, and one of the impressions I'm getting is that for some, it's still in the too difficult box. Uh, but maybe for others, and USPS is it may be a very good example, you, you can't leave it in the too difficult box because actually the business continues to, to suffer quite significantly because of the inflexibilities of the, of the US system. But maybe we'll come back to that. 